Uh, here we go. Okay. So welcome everyone. Um, we're really happy to have you here if I can find my screen. And um, where did it go? There we go. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Lucy Gray. We're really happy to have you here. Um, please let me know if you have any questions as we go along. Feel free to interrupt. Uh, there are several links for you in the chat. One is the Sandbox site, which you can play with um, and experiment with. And don't worry about uh, anything that you post in there because it will be deleted at some point and the public is not in there. Um, you do have to register for the Sandbox site. And then um, I've added most people to the training rooms there um, that you can just go in and play with. For people who are presenting on a stage, which is most of our featured people, you're not gonna be able to practice in the stage because somebody has to put you on the stage. It's not a big deal. I will show you what it looks like today um, uh, towards the end of this. So just keep that in mind. So the first link is a sandbox site. And then um, the slides that I'm going to show, I also have linked in the, in the chat too, if you want to look at them. And then the presenter's toolkit, which you all should probably have, already, uh, but I put it in there just in case. And then um, we've we've typically had a group in our community for, um, for people to ask questions and to get help and to see my updates if they can't find it in their email. And that's in our community, in our Ning community. It's been a little wonky and I'm actually thinking about abandoning it next year. So um, there is a WhatsApp group um, it's a little active, so you may want to mute your, your notifications in there if that's going to drive you bananas. Um, and the volunteers and um, presenters are all in one group. So that's kind of your best bet for just-in-time help, particularly on the day of the conference. If there's anything going on and you want me to see it immediately, that's the place to go in there. Um, so those four links, and I'll, I'll post them here again because I know we have a couple people that just came in, um, are really essential for today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, get my slides up here. Um, we also want to, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So uh, here we go. Um, and if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat or, um, you know, unmute and, and, and feel free to, to interrupt me. So welcome to our training session. Hopefully this will help you um, get acclimated and feel comfortable with things. If you were part of our original conference, the Global Education Conference years ago, it was really a lot of work. And this is still a lot of work um, to use kind of our cobbled together system. We we use Blackboard Collaborate, which was tedious to get working. Um, and it, it just, it, it was clunky because it was kind of pre-virtual uh, conference platform era. And Happen is has been a huge improvement. It's a really smooth experience for the most part. It we've not had a lot of technical glitches from it. People from bandwidth challenge uh, challenge parts of the world seem to be able to access it. Okay, um, and it's been a really good experience. It's now called Ring Central Events, which does not have the same uh, ring, uh, no pun intended, as 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 uh, Happen. And so I, I I still refer to it as Happen, but it's now been rebranded as Ring Central because they bought it recently. Um, so so this sandbox actually is the old sandbox I did with the last training. Use the links in the chat, by the way. Um, I should have updated that. So today, um, this is what we're going to accomplish. Hopefully, uh, let me go back here a second. Uh, I'm jumping ahead, way ahead. Um, Okay, so here's what we're gonna try and do today. We're gonna to take a look at the presenter's toolkit, make sure you know where that is and what it is. Um, something about the presentation requirements, which, you know, they're not requirements. They're, they're strong suggestions, really. And then I'll give you a guided tour of the Hopin platform and we can drop into a session and we can look at a stage and see how that works. And if you have questions and answers, we can do them at the end or during the presentation, either one is fine with me. Um, the presenter's toolkit is a document that you should have. Um, and it is a lot of information. I've tried to organize it. It probably needs another go around of editing, but everything you could possibly want is basically in that 
in that document, um, including how to contact me, um, slides that you can use as a template, um, social media suggestions. We really, 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 really need our presenters to promote the conference. So there's some things you can do um, in terms of promotion there that I've tried to make easy for you. Um, and one of the things, and let's take a look, let's take a look at that right now, because while well, I'm talking about it, um, it, uh, I've had issues with, um, and here's what it looks like. This is the document and, um, uh, it, you can open up the, the, the outline here and kind of scroll down and, and and jump to different sections of it. It makes it a little bit easier to navigate. And so um, essential links are all the links that you might possibly want to access in one place. Um, there are some slides here that we'd like you to use. I don't mind if you abandon this, but there's some things that I, I do want in your slides if you decide to go a different route. So when you click on um, the slides, it should force copy it, you, you're able to make a copy of the slides as a template, okay? And uh, you could download this and open it up in PowerPoint if you want to, or you can use Google Slides. Keynote, which I love, is I think would probably work if you're screen sharing, but for the uploading piece in, um, if you're on a stage, it doesn't work. So you have to use screen sharing if you're gonna use Keynote. Last year, uh, Bill Rankin, who's been part of this conference, and also used to work for Apple, um, had a very convoluted way to do it so that your animations would show through HTML. And I'm, we're not going there this year because this is too much. <laughs> so, um, so here is the slides that we'd like you to start with. One is a reminder to everyone that we're recording. Um, and then, you know, an introductory slide about the, you know, introducing the conference, your information, in this part, we really, really, this this slide, I really want to make sure that you include, and that is including our sponsors and thanking them uh, briefly at the beginning of your presentation. We have two new ones. So if you've already done your slides, you may want to uh, insert this one into your slide deck. Um, Digital Promise and the NEA Foundation came on board yesterday. So I just added their logos. Um, and so this is really, really important that in every, recording we have that showing. Um, we also have a slide to encourage people to share and connect over social media using the hashtag glow slash uh, glow edu. Um, you can search on Twitter, you can switch on uh, you can probably switch uh, search on Instagram for anything that's tagged with that. Um, and so it kind of aggregates information together so that people can find each other on social media and that sort of thing. So we recommend that you use that hashtag. If you are promoting the conference, you might want to use other hashtags that are that are um, that might reach educators. Um, one that I've used a lot is Exchange Our World, which a lot of the like the Fulbright people use. Um, you know, anything that's related to global. And there's some suggestions in the in the toolkit that will um, that will. Uh, pull you into some of those hashtags. So if you're using social media, um, try to you know, encourage people to use that hashtag. Um, in the previous iteration of GLOW, which was the Global Education Conference, we used to have a map and with Blackboard Collaborate, you could leave a little dot um, on the map of where you were in the world. And we had people do this at the beginning of every session to kind of acclimate them and uh, you know, acclimate people and um, and marvel at, at, the, at the collection of people and locations. We don't have that capability in Happen. It's not an interactive kind of thing where you have a tool and you can do that. So um, we thought maybe you could put this up and just have people share in the chat where they're from. And it's a way to kind of start your session and see who's in your room, um, who, who's in the audience. Uh, again, this is, not, this is not really required per se, the, the sponsor one is the one I really would love you to use, but if you have the time and inclination, we would love you to kind of bring everybody together with that. Um, we also have some other slides here that you can use or not use. It's totally up to you. The white ones are really optional, um, but there are templates here if you want to use them. Um, and then 
if you get to your actionable innovations part where you're talking about how you can put your idea or program or initiative into action, this is a slide you could use for that. Um, and there's a Q&A slide as well. Um, at the end, these slides are kind of important about telling people where they can find their recordings. Uh, we publish them you know, as soon as we can, it doesn't take a lot of effort. We just have to click a button. Um, once they're done processing, we can publish them pretty quickly if we're not, um, you know, dealing with a lot of issues in general. So they'll be up, you know, sometime in the within an hour or two, probably of your presentation, if not sooner. That's my hope and goal. We also have, um, there's a survey that pops up periodically uh, that's driven by Hopin and it just kind of takes the temperature of the conference. This one is a little bit more in depth and we'd like people to take it um, after they've been in a session or two so that we get some feedback um, about the conference and that sort of thing. And then there's an invitation to join our main community um, if they'd like to. So this slide deck you can use, um, the one that I really want you to stick with is the is a sponsor one, but you're welcome to 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 deviate from this if you feel you need to. Um, anything else on here? Um, what else is important here? We have um, in our community, we have a presenters group where I post, you know, updates and that sort of thing that I also email to people some for the most part. Um, it's been wonky for people to join our community because of some technical issues. It's a long story. I've started a WhatsApp group and you're welcome to join that. It's a little bit more active. It's a little bit more immediate if you have a question or a problem or anything that you wanna to get to. Um, so this is the call, this is, this, is, um, this, is the, this is all the stuff that's in the presenters group. I've added a couple more training dates if anybody wants to jump in next Sunday at noon and then next Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, um, which will be, I think will be on GMT minus six then for anybody who's trying to do some time zone conversions. Um, and then the the Hopin site the should be here as well, the Sandbox site. This, their directions here are also in Spanish Christina uh, is is the person who's in charge of the Spanish sessions. I don't know if she necessarily updates it in Mir's mind, but the 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 this the information is essentially the same um, down here for anyone who is part of the Spanish um, strand. So just FYI with that. Any questions so far about things that I just talked about? And we have slides, by, by the way, a, a template in Spanish as well. Um, okay, so it looks like we're we're doing okay in terms of everybody being on the same page. Um, these are kind of a, a checklist of, of things that um, most of you have done. There are a couple people who have not registered for the conference yet. I need you to do that so I can assign you to your session. Um, if you have not done that and... Um, you know, most people have done these kinds of things. One of the things that is um, a little odd about Hopin is that there's a speaker profile and then there's your personal profile. So when you go in, and I'll show you this when we go into the platform, you may want to, your speaker, your speaker profile, I can update. So you can always send me a website or Twitter link or LinkedIn URL, and I'll add it to your profile or, or update your picture if you want. Um, anything like that I can do. You can just send me an email and I'll get to it eventually. The personal profile you control, and that's in the upper right hand corner of Hopin. And so you may want to fill that out too, because people will see, you know, we'll, we'll look at that as well. I don't know why they're two separate things, um, but they are. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. Um, so this is just a little bit of a checklist of, of things to do um, re regarding the conference. It's recommended that you take a look at Hopin support documentation. There is a section for presenters that's really useful. It's helpful to have headphones and earbuds. Chrome is, is the d browser that's recommended. Um, and if you want to practice your session, you know, feel free to do that. 
Um, some of this is kind of redundant. Um, so I'm just gonna keep going. The requirements, I already kind of went over with the slides. I'm not gonna go over that. So let's let's dive in and look at what it looks like. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and hop in and I'm gonna go into the sandbox so that um, I can show you, I can play around with it a little bit. The site is now live. The actual conference site is live so people can go in and do networking and that sort of thing. So um, uh, you're welcome to go in there too um, and check it, check it, look at things. So this is uh, the sandbox site from the admin perspective and it is live. And I'm gonna go into the event. So this is what a live event looks like. Um, there are three kind of sections that are helpful to know about. One is the navigation on the left-hand side. What you're looking at right now is called the reception page, which is kind of your home base. And um, and it has this, you know, this house icon, so you can always go home. And this is kind of, you know, this is where I recommend you, you, you kind of come back to when you're looking for a session and that sort of thing. Um, you'll see a link to stages here. We're going to have four of them for the most part, not necessarily all going at the same time. Uh, one is for keynotes, one's for featured presentations, and two are for Spanish sessions. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, if there's a live session, you'll see a little red, uh, you know, tag here that will pop up. And if you click on sessions, it's going to show you all the general sessions, all the people who are in session rooms. And most people are in session rooms. They're more collaborative than the stages. They are, um, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. They have breakout rooms. And if you're doing, a, uh, there are a couple of people doing 90 minute workshops. I've put them into session rooms because I think that it, that, that modality fits a longer session in general. So when you go into a session, it's going to look like this. And you'll notice on the right hand side, there is, um, you can see that zero out of 50 people have their camera on. That's what that means. And one person is watching. That's me, that eyeball. And the rooms can, thousands of people can, I think, can watch a session, but up to 50 can have their camera and their video on. So that's why that's there. As soon as you click on share audio and video, it is going to start recording. It's uh, recorded automatically. Um, so just be, just be aware of that. You may want to set up and then leave and then come back right when you're going to start your presentation so that there's a, you know, not a lot, there's a clean recording in, in general, it will record in segments of, you know, depending on when you come in and out of the room. Um, so when somebody turns on their audio and video, um, it's going to look very much like zoom. If other people came in here right now, they, you would see their pictures on the right. Um, there's a breakout button where you can do breakout rooms. It works very similar to uh, Zoom, which is kind of nice if you're doing something that's interactive. There's also a call to action button, and this is new. Last year, we didn't have this. And you can put in, and there's something similar to this on the stages, by the way. Um, you can put in information about things that you want people to you know, access. Like if you want people to access your slides, you can put a link to them here and you can say how long you want it to, you know, show up for people. And, um, you know, so I, here, I'm just gonna, here, uh, you should, there's a, that's what it looks like. So it's a nice thing to, if you're, you know, instead of having to keep on pasting links in the chat or whatever, you could probably have, you know, something showing here that people will access. Um, so this is a, this is what it looks like. There's a chat just for this um, session room on the right. Um, you can do polls, you can see the people in here, and there's a, a, a Q and A. Notice that it says session up here. On the right, there's also an event tab, and that's the chat for the event. So just be aware that there's an event tab, there's an agenda tab, there's 
a session tab, and that's the session tab for people who are in this in the who are in session rooms. Um, Lucy, do you recommend yeah. that we share that with participants? Just hey, yo, if you want to chat, just make sure you're here because otherwise you're yes. sending this question to the full event, something like that. Yeah, I would. I would say, you know, I would say, let, let me know that you're here by, you know, telling us where you're from in the chat, you know, encourage yeah. interaction um, so that yeah. you know who's, you know, who's in the room. People could be watching and not be, you know, visible because they haven't turned on their video. Um, and, and you'll see, you know, very often you'll see like 10 people watching and like three people are actually in the room. It's a little lurky eyeballs. Abstract. So can you, when I speak, the lurky eyeballs will also hear, hey, if you're a lurky eyeball, you can yes, also. Yes, yes, yes. The lurky you eyeballs will hear you. Okay. Yes. Cool. But Matt, you're going to be on a stage, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, that. I'm not worried. But, okay. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, but good, that's a really good point. You do want to, you know, you, to encourage people to, to jump in. If you don't want to see the chat, there's a, there's a little, you know, you can make it bigger and smaller. Um, so, uh, you know, to, again, to the left-hand side, there's also a networking feature and you can do speed networking with people. And so, you know, I can click on Frank's, um, and send him, I can, I can send him a message, but I can, these are recommended connections. Um, you know, and then speed networking lets you, it will connect you with somebody who's also online. It's a little, it feels a little creepy, but it might be kind of fun to do like a small chat with people and say hello if you want to, um, yeah, see who you're matched with. Um, and then the expo is going to be um, where the booths are for our presenters. And this, is, I copied this a couple of days ago. So if it doesn't look like your booth, don't worry, it's not your booth. Um, with the booths, um, um, he, here's what we're doing with this. Last year, the booth traffic was you know, minimal, I would say. And my in, in experience from other people have told me that usually virtual booths don't necessarily get a lot of traffic in general. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're trying to do this year is direct people there during certain times. So that's going to be at four o'clock my time, central time on Monday and 1 p.m. on Tuesday. And so the people who have booths are in the schedule as having a booth. Some of the booths are gonna be manned, some of them will not be manned, but there's a video or a presentation or a session room people can jump into and interact with their content. Um, so that's that's part of the schedule. So there are no other sessions. There might be a Spanish session going on during the Tuesday one, but otherwise there's no other sessions going on during that expo time so that people will will come and visit you and and learn more about your work and, and touch base. So um, that's there. And then under replay here, the next tab, that's where the recordings will be once we publish them. So that's the left-hand navigation. I'm gonna go back to reception and talk about the middle a little bit. There is a short description here. Um, I'm going to put some links into lounges for people to jump in for help. We'll have a Spanish language um, uh, session room that people can jump in and talk to each other, um, that sort of thing. And you know, you can use them to practice if you want to during the conference. But these are just kind of informal spaces that I'm going to create, and they'll be in the it, they'll be in the conference um, in the next week or so. The next tab is a schedule, so you can see everything um, that's on the schedule and the speakers. Um, if you click on somebody's speaker you know, profile, you can go to their LinkedIn tab and connect with them. I really, really, really recommend, especially for our sponsors to do this, go connect with people that might be uh, useful to you somehow. Um, the whole point of this is to kind of build the net, the connections that you need to grow your project or initiative or whatever. Um, so, so don't be shy, um, go in and connect with people because we want people to grow their professional learning networks. And there's, we have some amazing people coming and amazing sponsors. And um, I'm really, I want everybody to, 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 to come away with, you know, some new connections. So um, the schedule will look like this. It is searchable. So you can look for, you know, um, I don't know if you can look for somebody's name. So if I search for Julie, will, will her name come up? 
I think it's just, let me see, if I search for the word global, no schedule segments will show up. Well, it comes I, on the 29th, it won't, but on the 30th, it, there are sessions that have the word global in it. So you can search for words, keywords. There's also a um, filtering button here, that little, I don't know what it is. Um, it stands for filtering. So if you're looking for climate change, um, you know, things, you can click on that tag and all of the sessions that are tagged with climate change will show up um, across the conference. If you want to add something to your agenda, there is a little bookmarking button. You click on that and it goes into your agenda over here for whatever date it was. So that was October 31st. So that would be, it would go into my agenda. Um, you will also see some of recommended things on your agenda. I can recommend one session per hour. So our keynotes and our featured presentations are recommended and are automatically on people's agendas, which is kind of a nice thing. Um, so you'll see, you'll see that recommended here. And then you'll see ones that aren't recommended, um, which is, doesn't mean they're not recommended, just means that they weren't featured. Um, and they'll, they'll be in here in my agenda. Um, so that's that, um, that's the schedule. Then there's the sponsors and these are all hyperlinked. So you can go visit the sponsors websites. And then the last tab here are speakers. And again, you can see who's speaking and connect with them. There are a lot of people. Um, it's amazing. So, um, please browse that and you can take a look at people. Um, okay. The other thing that's important to that the schedule is here, but if you also need to access it, um, it's also, it pops up, where did it go? Um, when you scroll down, it also, there's a little pop-up window that will also bring the schedule up as well. So it's easy to not see that, and um, but it does the same thing as the schedule on, um, on the reception page. So um, I've added all of your names to the practice rooms here <laughs> so that you have, you can, uh, you can, you can use this. Um, and then on the right-hand side, this, this is important. You can get messages from people, um, alerts to messages will be under notifications. And on the right-hand side where you see that circle, this is where you you can edit your profile. And in your profile, you're asked to um, indicate your interests and that sort of thing in your privacy settings. Like if you don't want anybody to bother you, you can just say, I only want organizers to be able to message me and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and you can also upload your picture and that sort of thing. Some of these things may not be available to you. I'm an admin. So, you know, like the chat support one may be just available to me. The languages one is really interesting. It's not going to change. It's not going to translate everything, but it's going to change the interface of the website. So if you're a Spanish speaker and you'd like to see the buttons and everything in Spanish, um, you can change the interface and make it a little bit more user friendly for you. Um, is Ital Italian's there, Stella? So you can you can change it to Italian if you'd like to. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's not every language out there, but it's uh, you know enough to to help people navigate a little bit better. Um, and then uh, there's a help button too, and their help documentation is, pr is pretty good. Um, but we will have a help lounge, and I think my husband is actually going to be staffing the help lounge. I hope he can help you. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Um, but there, but the help is is actually hop in support, and that's probably better than than our help lounge. Um, and then is there something else I was going to tell you here? Um, we can do polls, we can do announcements, um, and you know, like when we do the expo, we'll we'll. It, I typically try to, if I'm not besieged with issues, um, I try to make announcements about keynotes and things like that too to draw people to the room. So. The next thing I want to show you is what a stage looks like. And so you can see the difference between this. And even if you're not presenting on a stage, you might find this interesting. The front view of a stage looks like this right now. Um, and nothing's nothing is live on that. So you're you can't you won't see anything, but you would click on one of these 
to go into a stage room and it will you would see somebody on stage like this and you would see a chat on the right hand side. So this is the front facing public side. For the people who are presenting on a stage, which is the keynotes and featured people for the most part, um, I'm going to give you a link. I'm gonna give everybody links, but I'm gonna give you a specific link to your stage. And, and I think I'm gonna be able to broadcast some of these on social media too. And I it's gonna take me a while to set it up, but I, I've been talking to hop in about it today and I think I, I can do it. So um, if, um, if anybody wants to come backstage, they can, I'll, I'll give you a link so you can try it out. Um, we may get some feedback with noise, but um, this is this is the backstage link that will enable you to do this. So um, if I click on that, it's gonna take me to the backstage after it lets me go in and it says entering the broadcast studio. This link you do not wanna give out to the public. This is for presenters. Um, oh, and I'm not in, I'm not in Chrome. So let me try it. That's what happens when you use Safari in this. Um, okay, here it comes. Um, so you put your name in and when you come into the room, you're not on screen, which is great. And I really like StreamYard's technology. It works really well. We do webinars with us on a regular basis. Um, and it just is, it's seamless. Um, so when you, as a presenter, come into a stage, you're going to see yourself down below in this, in this, um, um, you know, this tray. And you're not on screen yet. And you can't put yourself on screen. I have to do it or another moderator with privileges has to do it. And I have a woman helping me named Cindy and possibly another woman named Julene. And one of us will be in the stages to help you get set up and to put you on screen. So what's going to happen is, um, and if anybody wants to click on the link and come in, they can, um, you're going to be put on stage like this. and. Um, uh, and you're going to upload your slides, which could be in PowerPoint or um, Google Slides. And uploading the slides is not a big deal. You just are going to have to log into your Google account. And um, and it puts your slides in like it's another person. So um, I'm gonna put in, um, I have no idea what these are. Um, I'll just put in a, a, the glow slides. And you can see in the left-hand side, it's importing it in, it's processing it. And if you make any changes to the slides, you're gonna to need to put it back in, by the way. So I can add the slides to the stage and there are different layouts for it. Um, and you know we can decide during, you know, right before your presentation what layout you wanna do. Um, so that's how the slides work. And then you just click through here and, and go through the slides. There are comments, which is the public chat on the right hand side. And this is what a comment looks like. And we can we can take comments and we can put them up on the screen for people to see a little bit more readily. So um, you know whoever is moderating your session, if you're on a stage, will be looking for those and um will you know kind of bookmark some of the ones that they might want to bring up if they're questions and that sort of thing, we can bring them up for you. Um, we can also put banners up. So if probably ahead of time, I'll try to put some banners in here for organizations like, you know, Google, you know, is that, you know, google.com and we can add a banner so that shows up if people, if we want to leave your contact information or your, your organization's website or whatever, it will pop up here. 
Um, I also will probably rebrand this. There's with that's a whole nother conversation. That's something you don't have to worry about. But the private chat is where you can communicate with whomever's backstage helping you. If you have an issue and say, help, you know, I'll see it, but the the rest of the audience won't see it in that private chat. So this is this is what the stage looks like. It's pretty, um, it's you know, you're the tools that are available to a presenter are much more limited than what you see from me here. Um, you'll be able to mute and, and that sort of thing, um, but not a whole lot else. There is a way to, um, this does not work in session rooms. There is a virtual background option. I know the Institute for Humane Education, people have a background they wanna use. Um, uh, if you wanna send it to me, I can, I, I think you, I think you're going to have to do it individually, but you can send me a copy of it. I don't think, I don't think I can do it for individual speakers. I think everybody has to do it for themselves. Um, and, you know, if you upload it and I have a green screen, which helps. Um, and, and then you have this little background and you can adjust it somewhat. Um, so anyway, that's, that's how the virtual backgrounds work. Uh, my suggestion would be to come in you know, sessions are going for 50 minutes and then there's a 10 minute break. The keynotes are every three hours. So you have, you know, there shouldn't be somebody in here right before you if you're a keynote. Um, you can come in and whenever you want to and 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 hope, and, you know, if you're coming in, let me, if, if you're coming in super early, let me know so I can be here to help you. But I'll probably be in here, you know, like 15 minutes before um, if I don't hear from you. Um, waiting, waiting to help you get set up and that sort of thing. So that's how that works. And so the broad, you know, what will happen is we'll go live and that will broadcast into hop in into this page, if that makes sense. So let me stop there. That's a lot of information. Um, I, it's, it's pretty easy to use. If you've been using Zoom, and, and, you know, which I think everybody has because of the pandemic, you should be okay. Questions, thoughts, comments. What have I not covered? I think you've covered everything, Lucy, but I have a question that might be covered yeah. somewhere in the documents, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. So if, I have, if, I, if I have people coming in as panelists, they'll be there the whole time for the yeah. presentation. And will they have the same link and everything like Zoom that I have? We'll get a link for our session and should we join like 15 minutes earlier or will somebody else be on that? No, in that if you're in a session room, nobody else will be in there. Okay. If you are a featured present presenter, there may be, we have the, we have a featured, um, maybe we could, I don't know, maybe we can figure it out another way to do this. Um, if you're a featured presenter on a stage, there's likely going to be somebody before you. So, you know, come in like 10 minutes before and just sit in the background. And when, and when that person's done, we'll get you set up. If you're in a session room, they're individual. I've created a room for each session and it'll Thanks. be an individual link. Um, and the, the, what I'll do is I'll export when the schedule is complete, I will export it as a spreadsheet and give it to the presenters with every single link on it. So Fantastic. you don't. So you don't have to worry about it. Do not give the links to the public though. They come in through hop in. That's, that's the one thing. Um, if you have somebody, I don't, I don't know what it looks like if you're not a presenter coming into a session room. I don't, I don't think there's that much difference than being a presenter than an attendee. You like, you, you maybe, you know, cause they're pretty collaborative rooms. Um, so if somebody doesn't, isn't added as a presenter, I'm not sure if it's the end of the world. Um, but if, if there's anything you want me to change in terms of presenters, adding people, you know, let me know whenever, and I, I'm happy to adjust and, and, and make that happen. If you can do it before the 13th, that would be great. Um, but I think everybody should be okay. Great. Thank you so much. Exactly what I needed. Okay. Lucy, I have a question. Yeah, Bonnie. For, for uploading our slides, could we mm -hmm. do that in advance or should we just do that 15 to 30 minutes in advance? You could session? do it in advance because it will stay up there. 
you could come in and do that. And I don't think I have to be there. Okay. And, at, and during this, right before the session, then we would just upload it. You had that list of, of yeah. slides. We would, we would yeah. just choose the one, but it could only yep. be there. Yep. 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 It just yep. seems like that might save time in advance, not yes. to be playing around. Yes. It. Okay. Yes. There is StreamYard is is was bought by Hopin, but then Hopin was bought by or Hopin sold off Hopin Events to Ring Central. Ring Central. It's confusing, like who owns who, what, what, and so they use StreamYard technology in Hopin, but I have to buy a StreamYard account, a business account, <laughs> to be able to do fancy things with it separately. So it's a long story. Um, it's not one spell, you know, smooth thing. Um, anyway, I can, what I'm, what I'm hoping to do if I don't go insane in the next week is there in, in StreamYard, I can stream to eight different social media channels. So I'm hoping to get at least the keynotes, if not the feature presentations, um, streamable, um, on LinkedIn live, YouTube and Facebook. So that, you know, maybe we catch a few more viewers that way. I, I would rather people come in to hop in and register because there's all the other sessions to grab. But, you know, you know, in this attention economy, um, I'll do whatever it takes to kind of get people to, to engage. Um, what I need from people, what, what, what I need, what you guys can do to help me right now is get the word out. And um and I know the Institute for Humane um, Education has been getting the word out like crazy. So thank you everyone for doing that. I It's hard to get, my impression is that it's hard to get teachers to sign up for things these days. Everybody is still a little tired. Everybody is busy. A lot of people wanna watch um, the recordings. So don't freak out if you don't have like a lot of people watching because people will come back and watch the recordings. And I'm going to keep the recordings open for everyone, including the free accounts through the end of the week. And then the paid tickets will have access for six months. So, um, so, so keep that in mind that it, it's, I think everybody that I have talked to in the last couple of months about, you know, outreach and that sort of thing it has, has found that there's some reluctance to engage. And I don't know what the secret is to that. I think Today is, is Climate Action Day, and this group called TAG is doing streaming all day. They have about 169 people watching, at least when I was watching for the past couple hours. And that's not bad, you know. And, and you know, you would, you know, I guess we're used to kind of thinking that we have to have Google kind of numbers of millions of people. Well, um, I don't know if it's possible to get that without, I don't know. It, 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 it's really hard. So there is a flyer that is in the in the presenters toolkit. There's social media graphics, which I've had the worst time sharing with people. Um, if you want to be added to my class and then to the folder, send me an email and I'll 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 give you access. It's in Canva, which I love, but their sharing stuff is weird. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with it. Um, and there's graphics in there that you can manipulate and that sort of thing. Um, we have created a press release with this that's been on PR web. We have, and in all honesty, I got a lot more attention for our AI conference that we did in August uh, than this. And that just tells you what people's priorities are these days and interests, I think. Um, and then we've been in, we're gonna be in, we have been and are going to be in, Ed Surge's newsletter. Um, there are events that are listed at the end of their K-12 and their higher ed newsletter. So, you know, you know, plus I'm trying to, to do a lot of social media and we have some media partners who are trying to get things out. Um, so, you know, if we have anybody who's a big TikToker, like I'm not really, I'm going to try, <laughs> uh, you know, try just talking on TikTok about what this is about. And, and, you know, and seeing if anybody, you know, grabs it and goes with it. What What's so lovely about this conference is that it's people coming from all levels of, of, of education, all levels of sophistication with this kind of thing, uh, all different countries having the opportunity 
you know, you know, an equitable opportunity to present and share their ideas with the world. And, um, and what I have seen over the years are people getting to know each other and developing relationships and working on projects together. And I think that's really exciting. So the way I try to promote it is if you're looking to grow your professional learning network and find the people that you need to do global things with, this is, this is one place to do it. It's not the only place, but it's one. And um, so anyway, I just, I, I love this. I love the people that I meet in here. Our Spanish group are hilarious and they're awesome and enthusiastic. Um, there are a lot of Argentinians in this group and I meet with them every once in a while and um, they're just incredibly professionally generous. And uh, I hope you get a chance to meet some of them. Uh, uh, Marina is one and Christina uh, is another who are running the show and they've been incredibly helpful. Um, any other thoughts or ideas or things that I can do for you? I have a question, Lucy. Yeah, hi, Sinclair. Um, hey, how's it going? Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit more, and this, sorry, this is kind of a specific question, just about what it looks like getting into the live expo? Um, yeah. And Will that I'm look kind of like getting into a session? Or yeah, <laughs> a surprise? So, yeah, it's 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 a little weird. Um, and I haven't, I haven't quite figured it out. So um so let's go into the current. So this is what the expo oops, sorry. Um the expo looks like. And so if you go in here, it's jumping. So you chose a session for your for yours, or at least when I copied this, you did. And so people are going to jump in. It looks like to me, they're gonna jump right into your session room. And so I'm assuming that you or somebody else is going to be in there and welcome people and and chit chat and that sort of thing. Is that what your plan is, or Sinclair? How are you? How are you thinking about using this? Yeah, that's kind of what we were picturing. Uh, we haven't made it much further than just you know planning to be there for people that have seen any sessions and have questions or want to learn more about us. So. And I guess it's just live as long as we want to be in there and as many yeah. people join, it turns into like a Zoom. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could uh, you could do a formal presentation if you wanted to be. I I I don't think you need to. Um, and the other thing too is if you want to be in the schedule more than during that expo time, I can do that too. Um, here's this is this is the other piece of your booth, your you know, your description and your social media. When you click on this register interest thing. It's going to go into the data. There's like report I can generate after the conference and it will give the email address of the presenters or the, the people who went to your booth and, and um, wanted to follow up with you. So if people click on that button, um, I will give you a report with those email addresses in it. Um, another thing you might want to do is create a, this poll is just for the booth here. So you might want to do that. Um, the Q and A is kind of like standard questions. They, you know, people can put questions in here and you can answer them. I didn't see people using it a lot last year, but you could probably put some standard questions in there for people to browse. And then, um, I, and, and by the way, in session rooms in general, if you gave me your Twitter ID, um, I put it in. So in sessions, there'll be a tab with your Twitter feed. Um, if you don't want it, let me know. Um, if you do want it and you haven't given me your Twitter, I will add it. Um, so for, for booths as well, I put it in as well. So people also can click on here and then follow you guys as well. Um, and then you'll have, you can, I guess, I, I, I don't know if you guys have these capabilities or not. I don't know if it's just for me or for you, but it looks like there's a way, I wonder if this is an announcement just for the booth. Um, I don't know if this is for me or what, but we'll see. It might be for everybody. It might be just me. I don't know. We'll have to see how that works. That's weird. Um, uh, so Sinclair, let me know if if there's something missing or you don't know how to do something once you go in and play with it. 
the other piece of it too is I guess you could have put it, you know, when you're not using your session room, you have the ability to edit your own e e exhibit. So you could put up your video when you're not in there. Mm -hmm. And Lucy, I can email you about this. I can't um, get into our expo anymore. It's like grayed out. Um, so I might reach out to you about Yikes. What, why that would be. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That's really weird. In the, <laughs> in, in the live session. In the live, yes. in the real, in the real conference. I wonder if it's because the we real went, deal. I wonder if it's because we went live. I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out after this. That sounds great. Right, it doesn't you. sound great. It doesn't sound great, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, any other questions before we wrap up? Okay. I'm really excited. And, um, I think we're going to have a great time and, uh, you know, Oh, last thing. Oh, this is important. There are networking tools in the platform. And again, to my point about, um, uh, let me get out of here, um, about networking. Um, when you go, I'm going to go to reception. I'm going to go to the tabs over here. Here are the people that are in here. Here's Frank. I can schedule a meeting with Frank and invite him to it. And, and it says, you know, you can add an on-site location while we're not hybrid, uh, a virtual meeting. I believe it lets you use the hop in platform, you know, and, um, you know, you can grab times like this. I, it's, it, I, I have not tried to do it. You can put up, you can have up to 20 people in a meeting. So if you see somebody, you know, send them a note and then say, I'd like to have a meeting with you. And then you can schedule a meeting. Um, you can also do, this is how you send a message. Um, and I can just say, hello, Frank. And um, you can also put gifts in there. There's some kind of funny gift stuff you can do. And you can also invite somebody to a video call and it gives them, it looks like it, it makes like a session room for your call. That's kind of cool. Um, if this person is annoying you or whatever, you can report them, you can block them, you can mute that person. I don't know what the difference is between mute this person for me or mute this person altogether. Um, but that's, that's how you would um, do some networking. And so take advantage of that. You know, my, 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 um, suggestion would be to look, you know, keep looking over the list of attendees and see if there's anybody that you'd like to meet, you know, over the next 10 days and then, you know, set up meetings or invite them to your booth or whatever. Um, but you know, during the conference and, and take advantage of it, those tools. Okay. Anything else? It's nice to see you all. And um, please bother me anytime. Um, join our WhatsApp group um, for immediate attention. Um, Christina, I think the other Christina is going to do a Spanish training. I don't know for sure. Um, yes. She is. Okay. okay. I don't speak Spanish. I try ah. to listen. But I don't speak in so I speak Spanish. I don't speak English. I know, I know. So the hopefully there's going to be a Spanish session, and maybe Maeve can translate for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to Christina. Okay, yeah, ask Christina. Um, yes, yes. Thank okay, you. okay. Um, it's pretty. Everything's pretty easy. You all will be fine. Um, and if you want to go practice, you can go into that sandbox and, and play around and Sinclair, I'll follow up with you about the email and also about why you can't get into your booth. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop recording.